Hello YouTube. I know I said I was going to do videos about traveling. And I, I, I it's still in my head, but you guys know I'm a, I'm not too good in follow through when I make plans. Because my YouTube channel is just very how I feel at the moment and what I want to talk about at the moment. And and what I want to talk about in this video is I just finished watching this movie called Master. Uh I already knew before I started it that I wouldn't jive with it, but the main actress, whose name I don't know, um, I'm not that good with names of actors and actresses, but she was the one who played Brenda in all the scary movie movies, and I l love her as an actress. I think she's an amazing actress. Um, she made the scary movie series. like. I don't even remember what the white girl's name is in that movie, but like the Brenda was the one who was who made all those movies funny and happen. So I've loved that actress ever since. And do you guys remember in the scary movie she had that really she had the the funniest line in the scary in the scary movie where she's like she's like I saw your girlfriend with in the jacuzzi making out with some guy. And the other one is like, so? And she's like, with a backup dancer? That's nasty. That's even lower than the security. At least security can get you into backstage. She don't love herself. <laughs> I will never forget. Like, it's actually, you can see, like, it's actually totally by head. I thought that was the funniest line from all the scary movies. Anyway, I just, I really love her. And I was like, I was like, just looking at the name of the movie, then I watched the trailer, I was like, I'm not going to enjoy this movie. But I love her, so I'm going to give it a try, just because I love that actress. And as a synopsis, this movie, I honestly will admit, I didn't really understand the plot. Like, it was kind of part horror movie, part let's lecture white people on how horrible and how racist they are and you know black people are just so discriminated and they have no chances and all this kind of stuff and the plot really didn't make any sense i, I don't know the plot made no sense whatsoever objectively speaking the movie in itself is just bad uh not necessarily it's bad just because of it's super woke which I don't enjoy woke movies. Anybody who's been <laughs> watching my channel for a while knows that I'm completely against the whole woke agenda. But even if you take out the wokeness, it's just objectively a bad movie. Because, like, the plot doesn't make any sense. It doesn't go anywhere. The ending makes absolutely no sense at all. But this movie, there's just been a lot of movies lately that I feel like that have come out. This one... I also watched that Karen movie that was also like a horror movie where like the black people move into a neighborhood and their white female neighbor whose name is also Karen. I was just like, this is really on the nose. I'm <laughs> and she was like, of course, this super racist. <laughs> and then the black people had to fear for their lives from their racist Karen neighbor. Um, then there was that other horror movie get out or something like that was the name of it it's the one where like the daughter started dating a black guy and she took him home to her town and they like wanted to do body snatching with him or something like that and but there's just like this reoccurring theme right now where it seems like hollywood is making horror movies that basically are kind of and the and the plot of these horror movies is always Black people need to fear for their lives from white people because we're out to, I don't know, kill them and do whatever. Um, and in, in this master movie, like one of the very last things that the actress that I really like says, and it's supposed to be really profound even though it was really stupid, she's sitting like, she managed to get this like high paying super great job at this elite university and yet she's obviously like 
is it even worth as a black person to even try to succeed? Because, you know, she actually then says, things never change. And, you know, and this is like, this isn't just about black people. This is like, I already talked about this. I don't care if it's black people or Muslims or women or people of the LGBTQRFFXYZ plus minus negative up down community, whatever the, whatever minority group you want to call yourself to. Something I actually thought about today, and I'm copywriting this because I thought of I didn't hear this somewhere else, but I think it's actually really profound. And that is, I really think that leftists or people who identify with the left, they do nothing but complain about wanting change. But they are the ones who are the most bothered by the fact that there is change. And what I mean by that is, We've had a black president in the U.S. We have black people and women and gay people who are run businesses, who are incredibly rich and wealthy and powerful and have managed to have incredibly successful lives. Oprah Winfrey, one of the most successful and rich women in the world, you know, so it, but, and all these things are proof our proof, our living proof of the fact that society has changed. Society has changed. I thought it was such a dumb thing in that, like, it was such a dumb thing to write, to have the actor say after garnishing this incredible position that, like, most people would die to have in this elite college. Things never change. I'm like, really? No nothing has changed? Nothing has changed since Jim Crow? Nothing has changed? Since the gay rights movement, nothing has changed since women's sovereignty. <laughs> it's just so dumb. I, I mean, like, I really feel like the further left you go, the more brain cells are literally, like, just evaporating out of your head at any moment in time. It's this constant, like, why, why are people on the right so against change? Why are right people so... Right people hate change. They need to be more open to change. And I'm like, yeah, but left people also need to acknowledge the fact that Change has come, and change exists in the world. In the Western world, nobody cares if you're black, or if you're gay, or if you're trans, or if you're religious or not religious, or if you're a woman. Like, these things don't matter to, to the average person. It just doesn't matter anymore. You have the equality under the law. And it's like the, the people on the left, they want to bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch about change. We need change. We need change. But they absolutely refuse to acknowledge that change has already occurred and exists in the world. And that was like the main thing I was watching in this movie. I was like, like, um, it was just, it just didn't make any sense. I'm kind of like, the way she ended it too, she was kind of like, she was like, she was like, you guys didn't want me to really be a, a master. I, I actually don't know what that is. It's, I guess, something related to university. I don't remember. Did we have that at UCLA? I don't know. But she was a master at this university. And she's like, you guys didn't really want me to be master. You wanted me to be your maid. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this dialogue? You know, it's it's the same thing, like, with the Sex and the City movies, and, like, so many movies that are coming out now that are so ridiculously woke, and the whole bombardment and message is, like, hey, stupid, straight, white men, you guys need to be open to change, things are, everything is so horrible the way it is, you need to, you need to consider change, consider change, and I'm like, um, why, why can leftist people not acknowledge the fact that they don't live 50 60 100 years ago in the past i mean like when you t when you see these kind of movies where you interact with like the random leftists nowadays i mean literally they think they're they, they literally talk and act as if we were living in like the 1920s or something like women can't vote Black people only work as maids and in the household. You know, gay people are, are socially, they're sent to like psychiatrists and have lobotomies done on them. I'm like, it's, uh, I mean, like, you guys know these kind, this kind of stuff just gives me such a headache. It's just, it's so 
far from what reality is. It's so... It's so ridiculously ignoring actual reality and in the world and the society that we, that we live in. And I just personally find that so tiresome. And, and you know, then the left is wondering why people are mass migrating to the right right now. Because it's just gotten so silly and ridiculous, people. I mean, there will always be racists in the world. There will always be homophobes in the world. There will always be sexists in the world. That's just, you know, that that's just the reality of the world. But to kind of act like we are living, like literally, that, that last line, it was, I don't know if it was last line, it was like one of the last lines of the movie, that last line, like, things will never change. I'm like, you got one of the most coveted positions at this university. And you're saying things will never change. Like, it, it, I mean, it just legitimately doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. It just makes me wonder, even who is consuming this movie? It, it, it actually makes me kind of fearful. I mean, it really makes me fearful to, like, to think that there's people out there who watch this movie and go like, yeah, yeah. Like, the black man will always be oppressed and will never have any chances. And I'm like, I remember... There, before Obama became the president, there was this argument from the left that the, the definite proof that black Americans have made it is if some, a black president becomes elected. And then the black president becomes elected and then all of a sudden the goalpost is moved over. Now it's like, well, we need to have a black president and the whole Congress needs to be black and all of the branches need to be completely black and every CEO in the country needs to be black plus the entire 1% of the U.S. needs to, the top 1% of the U.S. needs to be black. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, how far does this goalpost have to go until we get to the point where we're like, okay, this, 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 Victim mentality, this you can't succeed in the U.S. bullshit is just is not going to work anymore. It's just so, you know, and I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, they hired an, an, a new teacher because the English program that I'm in is expanding so quickly. And him and I get along pretty well, but of course he's a little bit more left like most gay people are. And we were kind of having like a friendly debate the other day. And, and he said something more leftist in terms of when I was saying like how I'm totally over the whole victim stance thing, even as a gay person, I am not a victim in any way, shape or form. I have been able to achieve just as well as everybody else. I know and then it's going to be like, of course, because you're a white gay person, the white, white gay males don't have any issues either. You know, you know how it is on the left now. It's just... Unless you exactly say what they want to hear, they're going to somehow figure out a way why your struggles and your things don't don't count. But like, he was saying something about, so are you trying to deny historical oppressions? And I was like, I am not. Obviously, historical oppressions existed. And to some degree, yes, they have repercussions. I mean, like anything that happens in the past has repercussions in the now and in the future. Right. If I break my week, my leg last week, it's going to have repercussions for me today if I was supposed to go to like, I don't know, a jogging match or something like that. Obviously, there's repercussions of the past. My thing is just like how further, how much further does this goalpost have to be set until we say, OK, well, yes, the, the past wasn't fair, but now boom, boom, boom. Everybody has to just deal with it and life goes on. Right. And. He kind of, he kind of was like, so I was kind of like, and I'm kind of sick and tired of this argument of white privilege and white this and, and, blah, and, and cis privilege and all these kind of things. And he's like, well, don't you feel like now the minorities are basically just, 
how do you say it? I don't want to like misquote him. I know I am, so I have to paraphrase. But like I, the, the 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 basis of his argument kind of was like for God knows how many hundreds of years the straight white man oppressed the minorities. And now they're just getting a taste of their own medicine, right? By basically society openly saying it's okay to say all white people are shit and all straight people are shit and all men are shit. And these are just kind of like, they're basically, it's just payback time, right? And I, I said to him, I was like, I completely agree that I think that is what is basically happening. I think finally minorities have garnished enough of a voice that they're saying, okay, now we're going to make you pay back for all the BS that you caused us historically by basically saying everything white men say or white people say doesn't matter anymore. They're not entitled to opinions. Everything that men say is just stupid and misogynistic. It doesn't have any place in modern society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But my counter argument to him was like, how, how effin petty, how effin petty that actually tells you all of these people are. They are so effin petty. To me, it's kind of like, I, yes, I am a gay man. And yes, even though I'm a, I'm a white male, yes, I am a gay man. And yes, I have been called fag in public and I've been called gross in, in public and I've had people make jokes that were not sensitive to homosexuals and all this kind of stuff in front of me and I've been in situations that were uncomfortable because of the fact that I was gay or something like that but 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 huge but here people the fact that I know what that feels like I don't want to put that on other people. Like it's just such it's such a petty argument to me. It's literally it's literally an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That is basically what society is saying we're doing now, and I think it is absolutely petty. It's kind of like, well, the straight white man suppressed the black gay woman historically, so now I'm going to make sure that they feel oppressed and feel like shit and feel like how petty. And if you are of that mind, then I'm sorry, I have no respect for you. I just feel like that as a person who has been oppressed for their minority, I expect you to stand above, to take the high road and to say, you know what? I know what that feels like. And I know how shit that feels when somebody judges you only based off of your minority status. I'm not going to turn around and play that game. I'm going to be better than you. You are going to only see me as a gay person and not give me any kind of validation or credit for anything else that I've done and achieved and I've had to deal with. Well, I'm not going to turn around and be like, well, if you're only going to see me as a gay person, I'm only going to see you as this privileged heterosexual white male. That's petty. It's like, I'm like, I'm going to still give you the benefit of seeing you as an individual and acknowledging what you've dealt with and acknowledging the struggles that you've had to ha have in your life because I'm not going to be as small and petty as you are. So it's kind of like, to me, that was just, when he said that, I like, I just totally threw that back at him. I was like, ugh. I was like, ugh. Like, like I get what you're trying to say, but bleh, bleh. More than any, like now, more than ever, I'm just kind of like, I don't want to be part. I don't want to be part of any of these minority groups. Like, I just, I don't want to be part of the LGBT, FFF, 7, 9, 22, whatever. It's like, if that is the thinking, what a childish, petty group of people. Like, I just think that's horrible. Like, if you've experienced pain, to then turn around and want to put pain on other people? Ew, ew, you are a gross person. You are a gross person. I have no respect for you if that's your thinking. Like, you should really try to stand above that. So, yeah, anyway. And I think, like I said, like, I just was so proud of that. Like, I was thinking about that after I watched that movie. I was like, how these people with this mentality are just constantly like, the straight white man has to deal with the change. The change is coming in the world. And it's like, but then at the same time, the leftists with their 
we need change, we need change. And then the moment you tell them, like, there was a black president, that wasn't enough change. There's no change. We didn't have any change. It's like, really? Really? Okay. I guess that's not change. You know? And I'm like, openly gay couples running for presidency, women running for presidency. There's female CEOs. There's openly gay CEOs. But that, that's, not, that's not change. I mean, people haven't become so more openly social at all i mean we're basically living like a hundred years ago like <sighs> all right anyway hopefully you guys are doing well um if you've seen that movie let me know what you think about it and you know guys i always appreciate comments and feedback even if you guys don't agree with me which is not uncommon of course <laughs> so take care and be safe bye